Hello, and welcome back to a new episode of Time for You, where we nurture presence and love and well being, and where you can kick back and just relax when you're earbuds in, your cushy socks on, and just take some time for yourself. I'm Shalia Stevens. Today, I'm um, broadcasting live from downtown Frankfurt in a hotel room. Those of you watching on the YouTube channel can see in the background, I, I did make the bed, but it's not visible. Leia is coming to us from Zurich in Switzerland. Good morning, Leia. Good morning. Good morning. We have the uh, the Easter weekend, and um, mm -hmm. it's just one day after Good Friday. I don't know. Does Saturday have a, an actual title or name, or does it just get left out? I don't. I don't know. It's probably cozy Saturday. No, <laughs> chill Saturday. No, <laughs> nothing in Switzerland. We don't have a name. So Good Friday, chill Saturday, Easter Sunday. Yeah, that that would work. We just call it that. <laughs> it's this week the only time we could find time to do some episodes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I had to move it once, Leah. You you were so patient. It was like moving all the times. So today I thought about what we could talk about, Leah. And um, you know how we love those like teachable moments when we're in our own life and our brain just gallops off in some direction. And um, so I wanted to talk about what happens when our brain makes a mountain out of a molehill. Mm -hmm. And what what does molehill mean? A little uh, hill. Or... Yeah, so a Malwurf, oh. it makes those little hills in the yard. Mm, yes. So mm -hmm. it makes a mountain out of a Malwurf hügel. <laughs> For the German speaking <laughs> <laughs> crowd. I didn't know that word. A Malwurf hügel, mm -hmm. yeah. So I was, uh, you know, Leah, the last couple of weeks, I've been kind of working um, quite diligently and intensely on getting our my Secret Life interview series put together um, for a new audience. So I um, became a founding member on this like cool project called uh, The Collective, and they're creating um, a sort of new marketplace for digital products um, that is similar to Etsy, where small business owners can like feature the cool, the cool expertise that they have. So they have everything on there from gardening uh, to how to uh, cook Turkish to um, parenting mm. and life development, spirituality. So, and I was really following the guidelines. So they have like specific rules because the marketplace, um, they want to position it in a certain way. Mm. So the price point of the products is between a dollar and a hundred dollars. That's a rule. So you can't, you know, present anything to the marketplace that's any more expensive than that. And they want it to be something that's kind of quick to consume. So within a day or a week. Um, so it can't be like a ton of content, like mm. all everything you ever knew in a digital product. So there were just some stipulations and um, we had this sort of catalog and these are the the ways that you need to set up your product so that it will be accepted and Leah knows I've been super excited about it because like I like to geek out on those like digital products and on the funnel and like um I like the idea of reaching a new audience and so I was really excited about it and I turned in my um my different deliverables on the dates where they said it was due so we had a deadline for our profile we had a deadline for our product and stuff and I was really proud of myself because Leah you know we have a lot going on in our lives and then doing like a separate project on the side suddenly <laughs> you just can get a lot so I was really convinced that um I'm not going to be in the group of people who get like revisions. <laughs> so I heard I heard them in the Facebook group talking about, so we're going to be um, going through all the products and some of you will be getting an email saying that you need revisions to be made. And I was like, oh, those poor people that have to make revisions. <laughs> <laughs> not me. I followed the catalog. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I get this email the other day. And it says, you uh, need to make revisions. 
on, on your product. And I think I, I, I got the email in the middle of the night, like, like, you know, right before you go to sleep and you just check your email the last time. And it was so funny what happened, Leah, like, I thought, huh, that's odd. And I just kind of fell asleep. And then the next morning, my brain made a mountain out of a molehill. So let me tell you what it started to do. <laughs> it was like, tell me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to tell you. It was saying, like, I woke up in the morning. My first thought, you know, that first waking thought was, they've swindled me. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, <laughs> they set up these guidelines and I met every single one of them. And now they're saying my product isn't like ready for the marketplace. They're not going to let me go out with the first batch of um, the first launch where all the media gets put onto the, the products. That was a thought I had. Um, I thought um, they're definitely going to reject the product entirely and I'm going to have to create something new because I turned in an interview series and that wasn't one of the categories. Um, I had all these thoughts in my head like, the way I've worded the landing page is too psychological or too deep and it doesn't fit to their positioning as having like the shortcut, like being grounded in a week. Like my brain started to just blow up the whole situation. And then I'm starting to dread because I'm like, now I have to go in there and I'm going to have to change all these things. And then I saw myself in my mind's eye having like these diplomatic conversations with the owners of the collective and having to convince them that um, they accept my product because like this is accept uh, and so on and so forth. And it was funny because, you know, in the moment I could get some distance to that, that, mm. that thinking and from that little bit of distance, and I was like, Shaya, yeah, come on, this is ridiculous. You know, like you're making a huge thing. You don't even know what you've not met in terms of the guidelines. Um, and even so, so what if the product doesn't get accepted? So what if you have to make a new product? And so what if you need to make revisions, you know? So I was like a little step back and thinking, all right, my brain's making a mountain out of a molehill. And I let it sit for like a day because I was busy and I didn't have time for it. And the next day I opened up the email and it turns out, do you want to know what I did wrong? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I just forgot to put the full pricing on the product. So I had the symbol of a US dollar, but I didn't write USD right? Because, you know, there are Australian dollars or Canadian dollars, US dollars, like they want you to put the symbol, the dollar, the price, and also the what kind of dollars it is, which makes sense, right? I had overlooked that in the catalog. So the change was literally like two minutes. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I did it. I went to the form. I wrote them back that I had done it and it was done. No. Yeah. So it wasn't a big deal. <laughs> But the reason that I wanted to talk about this today, and so like, let's take it up like to the meta level. Mm -hmm. It's like, actually, I experienced all the feelings of being rejected, of being swindled, the dread of having to rework something, the pressure of having to get it done before the, like, I went through an, an entire experience mm -hmm. in my feeling body or whatever, in my mental space mm -hmm. of a whole story that didn't even happen or exist, right? And I thought that'd be mm -hmm. really cool to kick us off today as like, really, it's true. You know, we're only ever living in the experience of the thinking that we're having, that we're putting our attention on or taking seriously, and even if we have some distance from it and know in the back of our inner self that that's not really the truth, we can still have this whole experience um, that is in that moment our reality, but it has nothing to do with reality, mm -hmm. right? With the real reality of life. And isn't that interesting? And how often 
we do that in in life totally we are really funny creatures aren't we <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's always it's always the same i mean we only ever feel thinking coming through even when <laughs> a situation is probably hard you know what i mean i do it's we we feel it when we when we make it up and that's all we could feel if it would be really true both that's the worst that could happen yeah and maybe maybe it's a very 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 kind way of the brain to rehearse <laughs> somehow yeah but we don't need to because we're made for that that yeah but in real life yeah yeah totally and i felt i felt so grateful to know what we know and this is guys who who are whoever's listening this is the reason we're doing the podcast at all like we really want you to know is like you can win some distance to that and mm -hmm. When now that we're talking about it, you know, I remember years ago when I was working um, in advertising agencies, and you know, I would wake up in the morning and I would rehearse the day mm. that was coming fictitiously in my mind, mm. and I would see all the difficulties coming my way, like this person in the graphic design department department who was going to give me hell again today my boss who wasn't going to like the idea we were pitching, uh, the client who's difficult and, you know, all the stuff. And I would really paint these horror scenarios right in the morning for my whole day and just live in that feeling of dread. Mm. Um, and I didn't know, mm -hmm. I didn't know that what my reality was created mm -hmm. from, from my inside thinking and feeling. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any distance to that because I didn't understand how we work, right? Mm -hmm. And so that was just kind of that creating future horror scenarios was mm -hmm. just kind of my modus operandi. Mm -hmm. It's how I went through life. And isn't it good to know? Totally. Yeah, and it's so innocent because we don't know. Yeah. And sometimes we do it with the past. I did it a lot with the past. Like, because of what happened, I'm the way I am. And trying to understand it, solve it, heal it. Yeah. To, to change today. And it was totally innocent. And you did it with it with the future horror scenario no how do you scenarios? say that? Uh -huh. <laughs> scenarios yeah <laughs> oh god and <clears throat> this understanding is an invitation to come back to this point on the map or a bit faster or a bit easier back to now back to oh i'm in the bed it's morning <laughs> There is no whoever. And somehow you we 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 are able to start to see that there is no need to solve a, an emotion, a feeling. And we don't have to protect us from life. Because we we are able to feel all of that, even all the things that you just mentioned that you felt like rejection and and dread and all everything. Yeah. But somehow it's easier 
to really feel it when 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 we are in the moment you know what i mean totally and often it's totally made up and it doesn't happen as it turned out for you and we there is a lot of energy and a lot of life <laughs> that we waste somehow in this imaginary realm yeah yeah and and the real life is a lot more fun somehow or it's just different because we know what to do in the moment exactly. we never know what to do in our head we think we know yeah 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 totally and i i love how you also were talking about the innocence of it right yes like, like sometimes i get i get really self-critical with myself because my my brain is so i, I find it sometimes just so crazy you know mm. it just will go off on some crazy mountain out of a molehill tangent mm. and then i think oh why does my brain have to be like this? Why am I, why am I, why am I like this? And just for you to know, you know, in conversations with so many people, whether it's our clients, whether it's with other coaches and therapists, like so many of us have brains like that. It's like nothing to be ashamed of. Mm. Um, it's not, you don't have to worry about where it came from or how long it's going to be like that. You know, you're just perfect. Like, the way you are and mm -hmm. the more you can just get a little bit of distance to it you know like I I, I consciously talk about shell, me Shelia the core of who I am my essence the the observer of the experience versus my brain mm. my brain doing what a brain does as Amy Johnson likes to mm -hmm. say you know, and that even that's just a little distance, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. And and that's just culturally, we we identify with our brains. That's that's really conditioned somehow. Yeah. And I mean, you did very well in school and had great grades and and studied, and so this was really important. All the the functioning of the brain and it's very cool if it functions very well yeah but it it takes sometimes kind of off into its own life <laughs> and and does and wants to help everywhere where yeah. it's not really needed and also to see all the chat judgmental thinking the making a big deal thinking the wanting to solve problems in the future or the past thinking it's kind of cute and and it wants to help and it just blows it up and runs around and and yeah that's what we feel and it's okay and it's not us as you said this distinction of oh it's brain functioning. Mm -hmm. And that's cool too, that it functions. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally, totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that feels good for today, Leah. Yes, what do you think? totally. Yeah. So, well, now that you know that the product has been approved, <laughs> <laughs> anybody who wants to go have a look at it, um, it's our My Secret Life interview series. Uh, the link is always anyway under the podcast, www.mysecretlife slash or dash uh, interviews.com. And um, there are 21 amazing conversations with teachers of this understanding um, where we look at two like transformative conversations like th this one's like where were they in their life and what did they see that brought them out of the darkness and into the light? There are eight bonus interviews in there. It's really, really cool set up. It's very cool. And we talk very slow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we're all like in hope and 
and yeah, love. <laughs> it's a very transform transformative yes, series, which is why I really wanted to get it out into the world. And so, yeah, check it out. Um, maybe you'll maybe you'll love it. Follow us on the podcast. Um, tell your friends and family uh, so they can get some benefit out of these conversations. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.